Today's video is going to be about material science. So what we're going to talk about is different types of materials that exist. So what is material science and material engineering? Well, it is the engineering and creation and science behind making new stuff. Now, in material science, it involves probably the most complex of all the uh, other, compared to the, all the other uh, sciences, a lot of uh, engineering requ requires a lot of physics, but not much on chemistry or biology or any other sciences, or even um, math. But material science revolves a lot of everything. There's chemistry, there's physics, there's math, mechanics, industry, research. It's a lot of everything, and it's a really, really interesting subject matter to get into. So engineering is the application of science and mathematics to which, uh, which the properties of matter and the sources of energy of its nature are made useful for people. Science is a systematic knowledge of the physical or material world is gained through observations and experiments. So we take that and material scientists are those who research and develop new materials such as creating a new uh, cool uh, polymer. So you can be like a research scientist, a material scientist, surface scientist, polymer scientist. These are kind of the things. Now, material engineers implement the new technology that was created by the scientists and then make them into things that we can use for our lives, optimizing their efficiencies and creating. So this could be like process engineers, quality assurance engineers, aerospace engineers um, use material engineering. So what does a material scientist do? Well, a scientist does, again, researching and development new, to, new materials with different properties. The engineers will take and select the new ones and try to figure out ways to make it optimize it in the best way possible. And then the engineers and the scientists together will test, analyze that material. Um, now, all of us have to be able to do this all at once. So, what kind of materials are out there? Well, there's four... Uh, four basic categories. There are some other categories out there, but the four main ones are ceramics, polymers, metals, and composites. The other materials are organic semiconductors and nanomaterials that are a little less uncommon. <clears throat> so ceramics. Ceramics is an inorganic, non-metallic solid comprising of either metals, non-metals, or metalloid atoms, primarily held together by ionic and covalent bonds. Uh, they are usually crystalline. Uh, uh, the crystalline of the ceramic material ranges from highly oriented to a semi-crystalline structure to off to even more of an amorphous glass-like state. Uh, varying crystallinity and electron consumption and or, uh, and in the ionic and covalent bombs uh, cause most ceramic materials to be good thermal and electrical insulators. Ext uh, extensive research in ceramic engineering, um, which has led to large range of possible options for co uh, composition and uh, structures of the ceramics. Um, this uh, this is not, this is not even a closely. This is a huge breadth of subject matter, um, but we can do things like how hard ceramics are. Um, <clears throat> But general properties such as high melting point uh, temperatures, high hardness, poor conductivity, high uh, modulus of elasticity, chemical resistance, low ductibility are normal with the exception of some, um, exception of like piezoelectrics, which is material that it's a, it's a ceramic that if you hit it, it produces electricity, um, which I think is just really, really cool. Um, there are also glass transistors uh, that can superconductor ceramics and others that can also conduct electricity, um, but those are, you know, the exceptions. Um, so some of these ceramics are like fiberglass, carbon fiber. Um, ceramic materials are not considered part of this. Uh, many composite materials such as fiberglass and co uh, carbon fiber, while containing ceramic materials, are not considered ceramics in their family. Now, polymers comes from the Greek word poly, which means many, and then the mer just means parts. So it's a large, uh, large parts, or many parts. In the, what it is, is you take a monomer, which is just a chemical, and then you repeat that monomer over and over again, you get a polymer. So if I take tetrafluoroethylene, 
and then I put, and then I have that same molecule repeat over and over and over again, and just take that same monomers and add them to each other, I can create what is called polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTEFE. This is also known as Teflon. So po uh, polymers are going to be taking monomers and are going to be comp composed of little subunits. Because of their broad range of properties, most synthetic and natural polymers play an essential role in everyday life. Polymers are also known as plastics. Uh, polymers range from familiar synthetic plastics such as polystyrene to uh, biopolymers such as DNA and proteins that are actually polymers. Po uh, polymers, both natural and synthetic, are created via polymerization and what you basically do is take some small molecules and then add them together to create the, the complex. The consequently larger molecules relatively uh, is relative to the small compounds produced as a unique physical property, including toughness and viscosity, and a tendency to form glass or semi-crystalline structures rather than crystals. Now, metals uh, means it comes from you know the the Greek word uh, melatonin, which means uh, quarry or metal. It is a material that has uh, you can either have as an element, or as a compound, or as an alloy that is typically hard, opaque, shiny, good at conducting electricity and thermal conductivity. Metals are generally malleable, so if you hit them, they bend. Um, <clears throat> they will also fuse, meaning that they can be welded. They are ductile, meaning you can draw them into a thin wire. About 91 of the 118 elements in the periodic table are metals, and others are the, the other groups are considered not metals or and metalloids. Now, metal atoms of the metal uh, of metallic substances are typically arranged so that uh, they're either in a crystalline structure, and they can be either in a what is called a body center cubic, face center cubic or hexagonal close packed. In uh, body center cubic, each atom is positioned so that the center of each cube of the eight, cu uh, eight others and um, in a face center cubic and, uh, and a hexagonal close pack, each atom is surrounded by 12 other atoms. But the stacking of these um, into layers can adopt change their structural, uh, their structural differences. So I can actually change, even though we have iron or steel, I can change the st structure of the steel and make it harder or uh, or more ductile based on the structure of the crystals, even though I'm not changing any amount of the carbon or iron inside of steel. Now, because atom, uh, metal atoms readily lose their electrons, this allows the electrons to flow through the uh, atoms quickly, and this allows them to per, uh, conduct electricity very, very well, and also transmit heat very, very well. Um, while the flow of the electrons occurs, the solid characteristics of the metals uh, uh, produce an electrostatic interaction between each atom and the electron cloud. This uh, type of bond is called a metallic bond. You'll learn that in chemistry. Now, composite material is kind of the really new, cool uh, material. And this is taking other materials from the previous groups and adding them together to create something new from two or more constituent materials with different physical or chemical properties. And that, when combined, produce a material that has vastly different, uh, different from the individual components. The individual components remain separate and distinct within their finished structure, but the new material may performed uh, may have many different uh, pre preferences. Um, common examples are include things that are like stronger, lighter, less expensive when compared to their uh, traditional counterparts. Typically, engineered composite materials can include concrete, mortar, uh, reinforced plastics such as fiber reinforced polymers metal composites, ceramic composites. Uh, we have here these skis are made of, uh, are going to be made out of the composite materials. Okay, they're stronger, lighter, and faster. <clears throat> now, organics are things that are going to be, uh, are things from nature. Uh, wood, um, hemp rope, 
wool. These are all organics. They're created by an organism, plants, animals, and they produce them in their environment. Organ and then we take those from their uh, from the organ from the environment and we process them to create something with them. Um, basic structures of some of these stuff is like cellulose uh, can come from the wood or the the fibers in the in the rope. So we can create things from basic structures are created from like cellulose or tannins or cut uh, cutins or lingon lingons. Um, there's also proteins and lipids and carbohydrates that make these uh, th these uh, organics very much a different comp uh, than all the other stuff we've looked at. Um, because they are nature, they play a role in water retention and uh, on the surfaces of the plants. And so we can look at stuff like wool, ha the sheep have their fur there to keep water off so we can actually take that wool spin it into a wool uh, sweater and that will actually have a water wicking property about it and it won't allow water to get in now semiconductors are a little bit uh they're really really cool and they have some really good science behind them but basically they're a, they conduct sometimes so they're a solid usually and they uh, they conduct electricity under certain conditions, but not in others. And this makes them good to controlling electricity. So if you want electrons to flow quickly, you have to give it a certain type. Usually it's a voltage. So if I give it a voltage, it allows electricity to flow through it. So it's kind of like a crossing guard at a stop sign at elementary school. They can stop the, the children from flowing and then they can sometimes do it. Uh, you can control these things using like voltage or light or other things of that nature. And it can cry, create electricity to move that electricity. Uh, solar panels are actually a solar, uh, are a semiconductor material. <clears throat> and then lastly are the new and uh, the new age materials, which is the nano materials. Nanomaterials are things that are designed and controlled on the uh, on the level of the atom level, and they are deliberately controlled by adding in uh, on the on the on the atomic level certain elements that can actually make, let's say, glass conductive. Uh, you can have graphite, which is this picture right here, um, which is the strongest theoretical material known to the, uh, man. These are the new cool materials that exist in nature or that don't exist really well in nature, but have really, really cool uh, possibilities and a lot of research is going into that. All right. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me in class.